The Pharaoh is the heart of Egypt. The land is its body. And the people are its blood. One day you will rule Egypt, my son. Your armies will thunder across the boundless desert. And it shall tremble beneath them as it shook beneath the pounding feet of the countless men who toiled in the burning sun to build your grandfather's eternal resting place. He was Egypt, just as I am Egypt, and as you will be Egypt. His face is my face, and your face. His strength, our strength, for his blood runs in our veins. He labored a lifetime to build this monument, which now watches over us. And when it was complete, so too was his life complete. Yet even as my father was taken by Anubis, a new life came forth. And as your grandfather was bound in fine linen, so were you wrapped in swaddling clothes. And a new day dawned for Egypt. In time, each pharaoh must heed the call of Osiris and embark on a final journey to the immortal realm. For when the day of Pharaoh's reign is at an end, so the night of his eternal sleep begins. While he slumbers undisturbed, so shall Egypt endure. Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cleopatra Pharaoh. Uh, this is a game released in 1999. I played it uh, a little bit as a kid. I don't think I've actually ever beaten this game, I'll be honest with you, but, you know, it won't stop me from trying. Um, it's also, you know, I said a while back that I would be basically trying to do some new games that um, I don't think I'd normally visit on my channel. Um, I just kind of experiment with them, try them out, see what I like about them, and see if people like them in general. Uh, this game in particular is one that I think, especially if you're like a history buff, I think you'll appreciate it. I'm not much of a history buff, I just like video games, and I've always appreciated this one. So this came out like after StarCraft, StarCraft Brood War, so... It's about at that era, if you guys just want like a nice time span. I don't think I'd ever do anything really that much older than that. Let me just delete all these, um, families. So, we're gonna have to create a family name, so it's gonna be God Emperor Mike Lett. Um, yeah, I'll just do Mike Lett. That, that's, that's a short form of my name, of course. And, uh... I, I mean, I could say two, uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll just do begin family history. Uh, there's quite a number of missions. There can be quite a number. Um, the most what I'll do is I'll guarantee you that I'll get past, I think, most of the tutorial stuff E, um, and actually get into, like, some of the pyramid building stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a game called Pharaoh, of course, it's pyramid building, so. I guess without further ado, that's, uh, begin family history. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, here we go. Never mind. I, I didn't know if this many would show up. So, uh, essentially what this game has is it has, like, several campaigns. So it's, it has, like, five campaigns and then four campaigns here. So at the very least, I'll guarantee you that I'll get past the first one here. Um, but as I said, if it depends upon what people think of my run through this. Uh, if you guys like it or not, I'll uh, run through all of them. Uh, it is it is an excellent game. I mean, the cutscene, the first cutscene is kind of like, it doesn't really explain a whole lot about what the game is, but you'll get the hang of it if you give it a chance. You'll understand what it's about, so... Uh, this is the pre-dynasty, okay, period, whatever. Oh god, yeah, Egyptian names and shit. Yeah, I'm gonna be pronouncing that. Have fun with that. It is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So may the story of a great nation begin with one dream. The Red Land has given birth to such a dream. Clans of nomads carry it in their hearts across the immeasurable desert, and into the land of Egypt. Welcome to ancient Egypt, land of the pharaohs. 
Here you'll participate in the history of one of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen. In an epic story that spans more than 15 centuries and two dozen generations. You must lead one family, generation by generation, from its earliest beginnings in Egyptian prehistory, through the dawn of civilization, to the establishment of a unique and powerful empire and beyond. Our story begins more than 5,000 years ago, along the banks of the Nile River in an area known as Nukt. Here, a small confederacy of clans struggles to eke out an existence in the harsh environment. With you at its head, your family leads this small settlement. Alright, so, we have a couple of difficulty levels here. Um, we, get, we, we have hard here, we have very hard. It goes all the way down to very easy, so there's five difficulties in total. What the difficulties essentially determine is, I think, mostly starting money, um, requirements for buildings to kind of evolve into higher uh, states of buildings, things like that, and the aggressiveness of AI if it's... Um, there is actually military in this. Uh, it's a little bit of rough around the edges, at least for the military. It's primarily a city building game, I will tell you that now. And I think uh, I, the objectives don't the the objectives don't actually change. Uh, so we're gonna play it on hard because actually, believe it or not, on very hard for this game, uh, one of the one of the friggin' tutorial missions is actually un, unbeatable. I think it was patched later, but I, it was actually really amusing to me the first time I tried to run through the game and I tried to beat it on very hard. I'm like, this shit should be easy. Why am I failing? Well, it's because you don't have the tools to beat it on very hard. So we're gonna just do it on hard. So it's at least a slight challenge but not too much of a it will be enough of a challenge for me so uh here we go here we have our ui uh so it's telling us the first thing we'll need is housing and it's telling me how to also play some roads um how intersections work with workers this is the um i'll explain more about the system a little bit later it's like a, i forget what it's called it's like um it's like a it's a weird pathing system with regards to people that uh, give things to the homes but we'll, we'll get to see it in a minute. Um, so that's it for that. Uh, first of all, uh, game speed I have at about 80%. Uh, and I'll explain some more about the resolution stuff. So all we do is we just kind of make... Uh, I'm not caring much about this row of houses. So we're just going to make houses here and people are going to start flooding in hopefully. And we also have some ostriches over here as well. So here's uh, our first citizens. Say that this city has plenty of food to go around. And they're going to just go find a home to basically just sit in. So, like, normally, if you're plotting on making, like, a really big city, maybe you'd plan this out slightly differently than me. But I'm kind of just lazy, so, uh, I know that this mission isn't going to last very long. Uh, so one of the fun things is that I am playing this in 720, uh, well, 10, oh yeah, 720p. Um, technically I could have made this game go up to 1080, uh, but it, all that happens that is that, like, the UI gets really small and the text also gets really small. I saw some other guy playing on YouTube in that format, and I was watching it on my laptop. I'm like, wait, I don't have a 1080p laptop. I mean, what's the point? It just makes everything really tiny. Uh, so, you know, at least you get the widescreen, I guess, and it'll blow up if you, like, do full screen or whatever. But at least, like, shit's still readable, uh, and that's kind of what I did. But it is, like, a little bit of a modded version. This game doesn't normally have this kind of stuff. Um, so I guess we're also going to... Yeah, we're not going to make a well... Well, okay, so if I right-click on stuff, it'll tell me things like this, which is like, this house cannot evolve. It does not have access to even the most primitive uh, water source. So I can kind of put a well behind it. By the way, this is the only point in the game that you're ever, like, you're never going to build wells in this game. Like, I'm not even kidding. So that now that you can just notice that they, right before our very eyes, they actually upgraded. Uh, but it's okay, because uh, now we have a growing population. Needs a reliable uh, source of food and some means of storing and distributing it. Um... So it's basically telling us that we can hunt for food. This is one of many types of ways that we can store food. It's telling us, okay, a guy's going to go out, he's going to hunt, he's going to bring it back, they're going to process it, then we bring it to a granary for food storage. They use, like I don't know, like salt or some other shit to do it. Who knows? Then it goes to a marketplace, and then the person in the marketplace goes and walks around to all the food, the villages and basically upgrades them. Uh, it's telling me how to play the game, but I already know how. Um, Overseer Granaries is now available. Um, we don't normally have that much of that. So, let's just do that real quick. So, we're going to say the bazaar, um, goes right here. We'll do granary right here. And we'll do a hunting lodge, like, two right there. And there we go. Don't they got better water at all? It actually sucks ass. 
Also, these these it sucks to be these people. They don't get the better water supply because they're not in range of it. I don't even know if we're actually supposed to be like using this at all, but it costs like nothing, so I guess I don't really care, do I? So this guy will like, say like it will not involve until the desirability of the area improves. Despite the fact he has everything that he needs here, he also needs it to look pretty, but too fucking bad because we don't actually have any t options because we're in the tutorial right now. Uh, and if, unfortunately my granary, for some reason, even though it's kind of on the path here and it should be in range of the workers, nobody has found a job there yet for some reason, but they found a job here. Oh, there we go. Now it's, now it's active. So things are weird. They could take a second to basically activate. And here we have our first kind of roamer. And she just kind of, she went to go get the food from the, from the, um, from the granary over here. And so what she has right now is actually nothing in here. They're looking for uh, goods to sell. Did, did I, oh, I, I missed her. She left. My supplies sold like hotcakes. I'm going back to the bazaar for more. So she ran out of food like pretty much immediately, but that's fine. All right. We managed to supply this village, uh, village's granary with food. Okay. Now we get water supply. Congratulations. All those uh, wells that you saw me build are fucking useless now. Uh, that's the only point in the game when you overuse them. That's it. I didn't even need to put them down. So we'll just put like another water supply here. So this has to be on the green grass or for it to go. And then you're going to notice in a second when someone starts working there is that there's going to be a guy that's going to kind of walk around. And so he has to basically pass by the houses. And that's actually an integral part of the game, which is zoning things out so that people, uh, kind of run, walk past the houses and stuff like that. And we actually have one of our overseers. We have only the granary one. So it tells us like, oh, our food is good for five months. It's like, it's just a bunch of planning stuff, you know. If you like the technical side of this. It's, it actually can be a very complicated game when you want it to be. Provide ho people with food from the bazaar. That's why we have like two things of food. They don't have to go very far for the ostriches, which is nice. I'm going to speed up the game slightly because there we go. So now this is now populated because it requires apparently five employees to work the... A fucking well. And so the guy, yep, there he is. Now he's gonna walk, and now all you see all these houses gonna be upgraded now. So he only he only goes for limited distance. You actually see that he'll eventually stop. I like living here, but if I were running the town, I'd do some things differently. So we get to kill him because now we don't get to kill him. But uh, he says the plenty of people are out of work while he makes his deliveries. He's complaining about unemployment. There's no entertainment, and uh, the gods are gonna be pissed at us. However, that's not something we could deal with right now. Oh, we won already. Congratulations. <laughs> easy mission, easy life. Well done. By filling your people's bellies with nourishing food and protecting their homes from fire and collapse, you have helped this fledgling civilization take its first step on the long road of history. Oh, uh, shit. I think I did the tutorial too fast. Because it's saying I didn't protect the homes from fire and collapse. I, I did no such thing. I think I just upgraded all the buildings way too fast. Fuck, well, you know what? I, I completed it much faster than I thought I would. After many years and the passing of a generation, your family has resettled in the area of Inis in Upper Egypt. Here, a small band of local rulers is attempting to extend its influence over Lower Egypt and all lands along the River Nile, and to unite this realm under its own house with one supreme leader. Establishing Thinis as a thriving city like nothing ever seen before will prove the worthiness of the Thinite Confederacy and help them gain supremacy over Lower Egypt and the other factions vying for power. In time, this will mean providing the population with entertainment and building wonderful temples to worship the region's patron deity. To build a city this grand will require a substantial supply of cash. You'll find rich deposits of gold ore in Thinis, and harvesting them should be your first priority. All right, we're pretty good. So now we have a little bit of a new mission here. Let me just slow it down slightly to see if there's anything new I got here. Um, so the things that they didn't explain to us because we beat the mission because we're so good and I know already know what I'm doing. We have um, Firehouse, Architect's Post, Police Station, and Village Palace. Um, these, I well, Village Palace we wouldn't have gotten. Don't worry about that. We'll do that this mission. Uh, we basically, you know, obviously we're in the desert, risk of fire, I guess, stuff like that, whatever. It's very dry. 
Um, very important for you to have people walking around uh, to basically make sure, I guess, like fire codes or whatever the fuck they have in Egypt at this time. And they also have an architect's post for preventing them from crumbling. It's just something you have to have in every area with buildings. They have to be just walking around. Just a useless kind of a... Well, it's not useless. You have to have it, but they have to be walking around. And if they fail to walk around in certain areas, um, then it can be an issue. Like that you'll just lose buildings and it could be expensive buildings like this nice 100, uh, 1,800 DB decibels. This is the unit of currency we have is decibels. I think it's like Denari or something. I don't fucking know. Also, the music is really great in this game. I think uh, that's one thing I really enjoy. Uh, I'm going to slow down the game even more so we can kind of have a look around and not lose money on anything. Um, and we also gained some raw materials for gold mine. That's part of our quest objectives is to... Uh, make gold. Why? Am, why is it not slowing down? Okay, whatever. Because uh, I have a hotkey to do that. So, anyways, um, the police station we don't really use that often. It's only used in places where you have slums, uh, and generally, that's because you did some poor sh city planning, which I will sometimes be doing. I'm not perfect at this game. I will be the first to admit. Uh, because, for example, like, okay, so we have to mine this gold over here. Um, and the biggest problem with this mining gold here is like there's like a lot of space here that like you can't really build houses or shrines or anything. So the problem then becomes how do we make it so because like if I go make like let's say over here I make all the houses. Uh, the problem will then become oh well now I need to find a way to fucking like supply all this stuff. Like to I, I need people basically to come over here and work the, the mines. And so usually what I do, because I'm a lazy piece of shit, is that I actually make slums here. Because I'm incredibly lazy. And this is probably not the right way to play the game, but you know what? Fuck you for judging me. So I just make I make I make slums here. There you go. And then that may need a PlayStation, because you know what, you know what? They get they get a well. That's what they get. Okay, we're gonna speed up the game again so people start actually populating the city. Whoops, okay, that's too fast. Entirely too fast. Uh so once again, I'm going to go with the good old strat of not giving a fuck and just like making like a row of houses here. I'll make it a little bit longer than that, actually. And we're going to make our, the same, basically the same strategy that you saw before. Uh, just like a little bit of food here, and I actually shouldn't have made that food here. Fuck me, dude. I, I tried to undo it, but uh, I can't undo, t you can't undo two actions. You can only undo one. Now, you don't want to make them uh, too close to things like the well, the granary, and things like that, because... These people are extremely whiny and they'll go like, they'll, they'll, they'll have any reason to complain. And they'll basically bitch about the fact, oh, oh, I live near a hunting lodge, oh god. Why? And I'm going to make the fire post and the architect's post right here. So there you go. This is my ugly ass fucking city. Uh, the desirability of the area has to improve all too fucking bad because I don't have anything for that. Unless they really like living next to a well, but they, they don't like living next to slums as well. But, and this guy has no water supply, so... I wonder who's a, who the poor asshole is who's gonna live beside that is. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make... Where's that village palace? Right here. And so, uh, actually, that, that raises desirability, to be honest, actually. So this is, this allows us to tax people, and it also converts gold into... Uh, oh, it's Debon. Well, I'm going to still call it decibels because it probably pisses someone off that's very, really historically, uh, inclined. No, I, I don't, I don't just piss people off for the sake of pissing people off. I'm a nice person, I swear. Alright, so, I would love to look at the unemployment rate, but we can actually see it. It's like 35% right now. Uh, but nobody's working this shit right now, so, you know what, we're, let's, let's get one more thing of food. As well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start the ugliest formation of gold mines that you have ever fucking seen in your life. I, I am out of money now. Luckily, a benefactor uh, gave me more money, so we're good now. And we're now in debt again. Fuck me, dude. Okay. I forget that we're playing on hard difficulty and I can't just spend money all willy-nilly. So, when you run out of money in this game, uh, what essentially happens is that someone gives you money. Um, I, I'll tell you right here. Uh, your treasury ran out of funds. You are granted additional funds. There's no benefact- uh, but no benefactor will rescue again. Use this gift to create money-making enterprises. Well, luckily we have gold, so that's it. Um, it's also telling us about crime here. Yeah, but we already did the police thing. See, like, he's got, like, the fucking- look, he's like our cops. He's got, like, the fucking beating stick and everything. So, 
when you're in actual debt in this game, so you can see I have negative 289, uh, you can spend up to 5,000 bucks, but um, after 5,000, you cannot spend any more money. So it's a good idea to like set up some money-making enterprises. Like, economy is an important part of this game. Apparently nobody lives nearby these two things, and it's actually annoying me. Fuck it. You know what? We can have some houses over here, I don't care. Alright, we already have a fire in the city because, um, once again, like, the person who walks around this firehouse, they have to walk up and down. So, we may have lost the game. But, the per the, clearly the person that was doing this didn't actually ever at any point walk down. Because, like, it's right here, they can walk up and down the road, but you can see they're going to just put out the fire. So, fire suck ass, uh, is basically the point I'm trying to make. But that's fine, because we can just do this, and th this fucking house can go kill itself. So, these houses are still complaining about the de de desirability of the area. I even though they have, like, a view of the town palace, you know, they're just, they just want to whine all day. It's like, it's literally the best view in the entire city. Entire city I will call Miketopia, but whatever. Uh, alright, so we have food sort of coming. I, I, I could probably get away with now making more gold mines, to be honest, because I think we're going to make that money back pretty fast. The gods of Egypt, here we go. We cannot truly flourish without suitable places of worship, uh, which are temples and shrines. So there's a couple of kinds. So we have a temple here. And so temples basically send like uh, like a, I don't know what the hell he is, like a preacher or whatever. He goes around. He basically goes like, you should worship Ra or whatever. And they're like, fuck yeah. And that's pretty much all they do. Basically, the, one of the requirements for upgrading houses slowly is to have religious access to things for because they're whatever, they need religion, I guess. Um, and there's also shrines which don't have anyone walk around, but it does improve desirability of areas. We also have festivals. Uh, you can use it to appease gods. It's like a temporary bonus. Uh, because they get pissy. Um, yeah, they're very temperamental and very egotistical, the gods they are. And we have an overseer of temples now for that, which I'll show you in a minute. I just want to finish making this shit. Fuck, I can only make one more. I can only make one more here. I'm not even going to make the one more here. Fuck this shit. Alright, you know what? I'm going to also make another, like, firehouse and architect station here. Because I have a feeling, like, that, like he's not going to walk around it enough. Actually, let me let me just finish making the gold mines. I've just decided this. Can I actually make it around that, that thing? Oh shit, I can't. We lost. Oh, and I probably should have actually tried to undo that. Because, you know, gold mines are actually really expensive. They're 300. But, you know, but the thing is, it's literally printing money, so. Uh, but I probably shouldn't just destroy them all willy-nilly like I'm doing, so I'm actually going to stop doing it. Holy shit, what is this? Destroy that little thing that's in the way. There you go. Good man. Um, you know, fuck it. I shouldn't have destroyed that last one. I should just do this. And there you go. We're done. Okay, that's it. No more gold mines. Fuck the gold mines now. Uh, so even though we're in debt, we're just gonna do this shit. Uh, so we're gonna make a temple to Bass to start with. We'll just kind of make it over here and just kind of hope he roughly goes in the direction he's supposed to. And now to anyone who's kind of pissy, like like these guys are like, oh, the durability, the desirability is so bad. Fuck this place. And we're just gonna make a bunch of shit. It must be within two spaces of a road to affect the city. Fuck, we lost. All right. Can I just do this? Is that cheating? Yeah, there you go. Uh, that actually works. I cheated the game. Alright, so we need, still need food from a local bazaar. Alright, and also the granary is providing a detrimental... You see, like, look at the desirability. Actually, we have an overlay for that, which is neat. Um, where is it? It's like, uh, normal... Okay, it's one of these. Let me just say that right now. There we go. Desirability. Uh, as your city becomes more advanced, uh, they'll want to see jugglers and shit, so... Here you can go make jugglers and shit. Literally jugglers and shit, so that's pretty good um, So you can see here we got like everything's red uh, And red in video games usually means bad things, but fortunately we can we can fix all these problems by making a juggler school and making a booth right here And once again see there's like a little rel religious guy deeply unhappy. They could soon turn to crime. And we're gonna squash that. Oh shit. That was crime. Oh Shit no crime allowed in this city it's because unemployment, so actually unemployment isn't that high. 
Oh, by the way, they'll totally break in and, and steal our coffers, so... I just want to let you know they're dicks. Alright, you know what? You know what we need? We need more hunting lodges. And you know what? This guy can also have his very own shrine. You know what? He'll get his own he'll get his own shrine to Bast. Like, like, why the hell is it even, like, fucking... I do my best to give- I do my best to give the people what they want. I don't think so, because all these people don't get what they want. Fine, we'll just make another bazaar over here. It's because we don't have roadblocks, and I'm actually not caring about the formation of these at all. I, I made more of these, like, food stations, and then, like, it's not good. Oh, here we go. See, we're getting, we're getting more money now. So we're pretty good. So, obviously, the crude hut does not like being next to, um... Uh, gold mines, as you can tell, but these are these are the slums. These are the designated slums, slums of Myctopia. What the fuck is a sturdy hut doing? Oh my god, it needs more fucking desirability. You know what? Have have another shrine. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh, it it does affect the city. So if we go actually do here, we now have uh, overseer of diversions, which is basically telling us. Oh, you know, your juggler stages can entertain 400 people. Above average coverage. Okay, that's, that's a, not so bad. Uh, and here we have um, Bass, the goddess of home. And she's, uh, or he, I don't know what it is. Very sympathetic to our city. Uh, got six shrines and one temple. You know, and we could also have a festival here. So we'll just make like, I don't know, let's make a festival square somewhere. So we just make it like right here. You, you usually make it in like a place that's like, um, kind of like a intersection like this and so then we can just kind of go like hey you know what you know what best 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 is our bro have a lavish festival we don't have beer so we can only give her a lavish festival it's actually cats so it's an it i guess oh look now proving oh good we're in the good graces of uh best what the hell is it with this sturdy hut that's so oh it's because they're not upgrading because they're assholes because okay the fucking, the fucking person who goes around with the food is really dropping the ball right now. See her? Right there. She's, she's just, she doesn't want to come up there to the proper place. While we're here, we'll also look at the risks of fire. So as you can see, as the guys walk past, this building here has a, that I just put up, has a risk of fire. But, you know, that's what I mean. It's like, they can do shit like that where they just kind of walk past it and ignore it. So, like, all you can really do is make more, so, like, this is probably going to catch fire in just a couple seconds. Assuming that this guy actually makes the right turn. It's completely random, by the way, what route they take. But there are things you can do to kind of guide them in the correct direction. Things that we do not have access to yet. Uh, so we're really sad about that right now. And it, apparently we need more jugglers, so... It's not going to let me continue until... You know what, even the slums can have jugglers. You know what, slums need jugglers, too. Let's be honest. I mean, if you're gonna live in the slums, at least learn to juggle. Let's be honest, let's be honest with that. So this will just continue to make four new jugglers each every month, which I think basically means that e uh, four boosts for every one juggler school. Oh, and our lavish festival is gonna be starting soon. Oh shit! This guy upgraded. There is too little entertainment to be found at this location, and that is actually the problem of the difficulty that we're playing on. It is actually impossible and very hard to get the amount of entertainment that they want for these kinds of things. But all we're trying to make is actually ordinary cottages, actually. So it's enough. If we were playing on the other one, then it'd be a problem. Uh, we need employees now, but luckily we have more people coming in. Look, this guy. Heard there is a job here for anyone who wants one. You'd be right, get the fuck in here. We need we need people like you. The shrines don't require any people. By the way, it's just the temples require people to do anything. But as, they, uh, as these um, homesteads evolve, they also get... Um, so, uh, unemployment's back up, so we're good. They basically can house more people, so this can, can this one can hold us at uh, uh, 36 occupants, while this one is like 28. So it's just a couple more, but it's enough. And as you can imagine, it keeps going up and up and up and up and up. So... It keeps telling me to build juggler schools, but I'm not gonna do that. Do I actually need to do that? Yeah, that's all it actually tells me. Fuck culture. I am so cultured. All right, we're gonna make a couple more shrines. I think around. Look at this. Look, look at look at your desirability. Aren't you fucking happy? What's wrong with this guy? Okay, in habitability there. There we go. See, look at them. they're all upgrading now, cause we made this stupid ass shrines, and they of, of course still need food. So this is just 
RNG, but if we actually had what we wanted, uh, and they're called roadblocks, then we, we would have no issue with this at all. What's this guy need? Common Shanty. Fucking Common Shanty. Yeah, have some more shrines. Shrines solve everything. I've never met a problem or person that could not be solved with shrines. And there we go, we we won, that's it. Fucking won, guys. Excellent. You have built the first true city in this unforgiving land, providing for your citizens' corporal and spiritual needs, and have helped the Thinite Confederacy unify the divided land. Well, that's all what we're going to do today. I hope you're enjoying it so far, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.